Hi everyone and welcome to part 5 of my 2021 Serbia series. We're continuing our visit to the autonomous province of Vojvodina, in the north of the country. Last time, we visited the gorgeous Subotica. Next time, we'll be in Sombor. But today, we're in Serbia's second largest city. Nova Sad is an artistic and cultural mecca, full of impressive street art, history and architecture. Not to mention, iconic food and the quirky places in which to eat it. Travel isn't always worthy of a pretty insta-babe posing on a cobbled street in perfect lighting. The heavens have well and truly opened. You have been warned, you're going to get wet. Welcome to Nova Sad. everyone and welcome to Serbia once again and welcome to Nova Sad, Vojvodina in northern Serbia. Um, today, as you can see, I look like a drowned rat because the weather is atrocious so I can't promise there'll be much in the way of drone shots today. <sighs> Wonderful, but you know what, I filmed in much worse conditions. Estonia last year in December, minus seven degrees. Um, but today we are exploring the second largest city in Serbia as much as I possibly can. We're down this wonderful street right now, just off the main street with lots of street art. And that's one of the things about this city in that it's quite eclectic. And I always use bohemian when I say eclectic in terms of art and culture, things like that. But there's a lot more to Nova Sad than just that. Let's explore. Classic Serbian street with all the um, adverts for concerts and things. I like this, kind of reminds me of Cuba, Havana. There is a um, bar up there in the other direction, like a Cuban restaurant. There are also like London pubs and Irish pubs down here. Now, as well as being referred to as the Athens of Serbia, Nova Sad was also the European youth capital in 2019. Additionally, in 2022, it's going to be the European capital of culture, which is being shared with a city in Lithuania and a city in Luxembourg. And it's actually the first time ever that that honour has been bestowed upon a non-EU European country. And I think that can only be a good thing for Serbia, right? Because I think sometimes with Europe, there can be this view that it's EU versus non-EU and that non-EU countries are somehow less than EU countries. That's not the case, so I think it's about time Serbia had some recognition for something, you know? As you've probably gathered, I'm in the central square on this rainy Saturday morning. Um, the building in front of me there, the church, it's actually a Roman Catholic church, Church in the Name of Mary. And I believe locals, despite it being a church, officially, people actually call it a cathedral. It's something to do with the location of a cathedral in a diocese, I believe. And just look at this architecture, despite the terrible lighting. Of course, northern Serbia, as within Subotica, architecturally, it's quite distinctive and much more central European in Vojvodina than south of the Sava, if you know what I mean. Belgrade and south. Hotel Vojvodina. I discovered this week that apparently I can miraculously now read Cyrillic alphabet. I don't know how that's happened. Um, and this might sound weird for anyone from a country that uses Cyrillic alphabet, but I always love buildings that have got like the lettering on the top. You know, obviously I come from a country that doesn't use Cyrillic alphabet. So for me, it's different. But if you're Serbian, for example, you probably think, what are you on about? <laughs> church. Look at these um, gorgeous, very tall stained glass windows. I love these windows. They're gorgeous. That's one in the middle there with like an archway in the middle. People underneath I can't really see because I've still got rain on my glasses. I guess they all tell a story. You know? Once 
once again, as I said in Subotica, no one like shouts at me when I film in churches in Serbia. It's wonderful. Normally you half expect the crazy cleaning lady to go absolutely bonkers at you and throw you out on the ground. Um, but not here. <laughs> you might remember 2020, the chaos that was 2020. Oh, this is my third attempt at coming here. So the first time was in February 2020. I then got Corona. Um, the second attempt was when I went to Sweden for the weekend to see a friend got stuck there and couldn't get back to Serbia and ended up in Belarus for three months. So um, it's good to finally be here despite the weather. Brilliant, got wet feet. It's a tram at the end of the main street in Nova Sad. So it's called Turicica, which is incredibly difficult to pronounce. Basically trams were in use in Nova Sad between 1911 and I read 1958, but it says 98 on the windows. So let me know in the comments which one is correct. This was supposedly the only one left when they were taken out of use, when buses became more of a popular form of transport. And it was an exhibit in a museum in Belgrade. And now it's a cafe. Isn't this like the ultimate for transport geeks, you know? Before we go in, I think it's open. This could be the ultimate cock up of this video, right? But I believe Trichica means locomotive or something to that effect, because obviously trams are on rails, right? But then I was thinking last night, if you say Trichica, 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 remind me not to do that again. Um, it sounds like a train or a tram on rails, right? I enjoyed that. This place has to be the coolest place I've been in a long time. There's been a lot of them lately. This is Serbia. Um, so I couldn't film inside as in talking because of copyrighted music, as you can imagine. But um, take a look at these shots. You've got nice little old pictures around the inside of like, you know, what it looked like back in the day when trams were in use. And you, you actually sit on the seats that were in the tram. It's amazing. And um, also, you know, I think this personifies Serbia, right? Because since I've been here, I must say, as in Serbia, I've been having espresso a lot. You know, it's great to go into a kafana, a cafe place, basically, um, and, you know, have an es espresso with, not an espresso, with a glass of water as well and smoking inside. It's, you know, it's classic Serbia. My Airbnb host took me to one um, a few weeks ago in Belgrade and, um, it's just awesome, you know? Love that place. Oh God, this rain. <laughs> um, I, I was gonna say as well, you know, there is a definite different feel, a very much more artistic feel here. I know in Belgrade, you know, you've got Dorchol with a lot of murals relating to Partizan and Red Star. Oh, I better not mention those two. Um, but this street art is just a little bit different, you know. Love. And a VW Beetle. It's really cool. Oh, Jeff. But I love Nova Sad. Who's Jeff? <laughs> oh, why am I laughing? Oh, there's Tom and Jerry too. And a random scientific experiment. An artist. With a little mirror. Well, what happened to her? See what I mean about this street art? It's just brilliant. It's very much sort of, um, you know, modern and pop culture sort of thing. You've got Homer Simpson, Cartman from South Park, Bart Simpson. Is that Merrill Street? On the subject of weather, sometimes the weather is bollocks, right? I'm not going to purposely only film on sunny days to paint this picture of utopia because let's face it, we don't live in utopia. I think we've learned that the last couple of years, right?
as in Subotica, Novosad also has a synagogue, but this time I think it is closed. I forgot to mention in the Subotica video that that synagogue is no longer in, in use. I think, I'm sure I read somewhere, there's only one in Serbia that's actually in use. Again, I'm probably wrong. From this building on April 26th, 1944, Novosad Jews were deported to Nazi extermination camps. Here's a picture of Jewish Street back in the day. What is it with the old photos today? And it does mention down there about the fact that Novosad was destroyed effectively, not only once, but more than once. 1849, during a revolution, a bombardment of Novosad in 1849, and moving forward closer to today, of course, the 1999 NATO bombings in the Kosovo war, we'll cover that in a second. Right, I'm wetter than a sexy milf in a porn movie when the plumber comes round to fix her pipes yet again. <laughs> um, so I'm going into this market, what's it called? Fitoshka Piazza, I think. A Serbian market on a Saturday. It's always a hive of activity, as you would expect. Kind of reminds me of markets I went to in, oh, in um, Latvia. Oh, as you can see, getting past people is a bit of an ordeal. Um, yeah, vegetables galore. If you compare it to like a market in a country like Mexico or something, it's kind of the complete opposite, you know. <laughs> there isn't this incessant mad shouting everywhere. It's quite calm, you know. Guys just having a cigarette while um, selling their products. I must admit, I'm addicted to blueberries lately. I keep having smoothies. I've got a smoothie maker at my Airbnb. They're bloody brilliant. Milk, oats, blueberries, maybe a bit of honey as well. It's divine. <laughs> I'm in this nice little market area. Everything's all very wooden panels and everything. Nice, and you'll notice there, Burek King. You might be wondering why have I not had Burek in any videos yet this year? This is my fifth one in Serbia. Um, the key word is yet. Um, the reason is, I've been to Serbia before and I've had Burek in maybe two, three videos. So, you know, that will come at some point, but there's something else I want to try, which is, I can't think what the word is. Uh, <laughs> It comes from Novosad. <laughs> this is Index Shestitsa. If you look on Google Maps or Google it, you'll see Index, Index, Index everywhere for Novosad. But this place has been recommended to me by a local, gracias, I mean, not, voila, wrong language. Um, it's like a big sandwich. Um, and there's an interesting story behind it that I'll tell you in a minute. So you have things like cheese, there's uh, meat. I think that's mushrooms, because it's kind of like mushrooms in Spanish. Um, there's even one with Worcester sauce. Can you believe it? As you can see, it's very new, since 2020. Index Shestitsa. Okay, it's food time. I would have liked to have shown you how she made it, but unfortunately she told me to wait outside. <laughs> Thanks, Han. Um, look at the size of this bloody Nora. So an Index sandwich, as you can see, it's a ginormous, like almost like a Subway, but better. Um, and I think the traditional one, as I said, is with mushrooms and cheese and a variety of sauces. I have literally every sauce on the planet. Obviously you can have um, vegetables. I don't like vegetables. I'm not sure what this thing is. Oh, that is the cheese. Oh my God. Monstrous. And there's the coolant underneath. Really thick bits of coolant. I don't know how I'm gonna eat this. I wanted the smaller one, but she said it only came in the large one. Okay. <laughs> That is stunning. I think the white stuff is like a sort of sour cream thing. I think I have a nebes as well, like chili cheese sauce. One of my favorites. It's, this is like a heart attack waiting to happen. So the story behind this, Novosad, there's a university down by the river, I believe. And um, it's called an index sandwich because back in the day, students used to have like a notebook thing where they recorded their grade throughout like a semester and because students, you know, are scraps, strapped for cash, they needed something affordable to eat as a student, you know. Oh, everything's going everywhere. Um, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, so this is great. You know, it's 360 dinar, which, you know, as a student would be affordable. And it's ginormous. So clearly this would 
cater for a cash-strapped student for like a week. <laughs> that cheese thing, it's, I can't describe it, it's like a fillet of cheese, if you like, but I think it's put on the grill and like grilled cheese. That index sandwich was brilliant. Um, that also is a great example of food in Serbia, which is slightly unique and unique to an area, you know? When we talk about Serbian food, and I've done this, you know, Burek, Pljeskovica, Preblanac, love that. Um, there's a lot more to Serbian food than those traditional popular dishes, you know, and that's what I want to show you in these videos. We're going up there to the river. Could the weather be any more crap? <laughs> but you know what? I'm having a nice day anyway. Um, these bridges on the Danube, by the way, yeah, 1999, I believe they were all destroyed. So there was no way of getting over the river to Petrovaradin over there, which is where we're going. Okay, it wouldn't be a Serbian city on the Danube without a fortress, Petrovaradin. The buildings over here are very pretty. Nice. Greens, blues. And by the way, I've got steamed up thing on my lenses. Brilliant. Yeah, sorry, my camera is a bit steamed up, but this one is better than the wide one. Yeah, you have to walk up loads of steps to get up there, obviously, because, you know, fortress, strategic position up high. The front camera's all right, though. So you have to look at my face, unfortunately. The church ringing in the background. I believe this fortress is also known as the Gibraltar of the Danube because of its strategic position. Construction started in 1642, which is around the same time that Novosad was founded as a city. We're going into darkness. Wow, you've got these holes going up to the sky. Right, I'm back in daylight. I feel a bit dizzy for some reason. There are amazing views of Nova Sad. You can see over there some very sort of brutalist architecture and all these classic Serbian sort of terracotta roofs and the spire of the church over there with industry in the distance. Of course, it is the second largest city in Serbia, but you know, from up here you can get a bit of perspective around how large it is. Obviously, it's not, you know, Mexico City or Moscow or something, but, you know, it's still a good size. If I remember correctly, this fortress is one example in Serbia of a fortress which is relatively kind of intact in comparison to others. So the one in Smedarevo was blown up because it was used by the Germans during the Second World War as a arsenal, like an ammunitions place. I'm in this spooky tunnel now, heading hopefully to the catacombs. I can't really see what I'm treading on. These catacombs, read about it on Atlas Obscura. Supposedly, you're not really allowed to go down there by yourself because apparently it's quite dangerous. So naturally that means I will try. Um, bloody hell mud. Unfortunately, it doesn't look likely. There are two doors. That one and that one. That one's like a business. It has like business hours on the front. Um, I can only assume that I will not be able to get in through this moat-like, castle-like, medieval door. Yes, I'm correct. Yeah, apparently these catacombs are rather mysterious, as you would expect, a catacomb. Um, and there are like four levels, apparently, and one of them is the black one. That's the most mysterious. It was used by alchemists and Freemasons back in the day. What's a Freemason? Hang on, what's this? It's clearly not a door, unless it's for dwarves. Ooh. Okay, darkness. Oh. Oh, hang on. Okay, this is probably where I need a torch. Absolute darkness, silence. I'm using the torch on my phone that I'm filming with. Um, there are passageways going in all directions. I can't see anything. I would need a proper flashlight, big thing. There's like a hole down there. So I can see what they mean when they say it's dangerous. I'm a bit scared for the first time ever. This is like that scene out of the Blair Witch Project. The woman with the snot coming out of her nose. Fortunately, I don't have that. <laughs> I wish I could show you it properly down there. Like with night vision. 
Oh, that was the freakiest thing I've done in a long time. Absolute pitch black. I'm getting out of here. Scary shit. Ah, okay, fast forward an hour or so. And I'm heading towards the bus station to leave Nova Sad. Despite the rain, I have actually had quite a fun day today. Shockingly, I didn't think I would considering the weather. And this video very much is kind of an opposite in a way of Subotitsa. That video is very flashy and colourful and complex editing, stuff like that. But this one is just descending into chaos as always. Nova Sad obviously um, is a big city, so it's the second largest city in Serbia, as I've mentioned. So there are plenty more things you can do. This video is only a selection of the things that I could possibly fit in in like half a day. I would suggest maybe spending three days in Nova Sad, I was thinking, if you want to go to some museums, to some fancy restaurants, things like that. I'd absolutely recommend it. I'm sure it's lovely in the summer. Um, so yeah, if you've enjoyed this video, even if you haven't, like, comment, subscribe, whatever. I don't really give a shit. Um, <laughs> and I'll see you next time. Check out the end screens as well. At the end, you can check out all my Serbia videos and you name it from this year, last year and the year before. So um, it's time to get the bus. I'll see you in Sombor, hopefully. See you next time. Catch you later.